Welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels, as together we celebrate this liturgy for the Friday in Eastertide. Would you stand and join in our entrance hymn, number 618. This is the Feast of Victory, number 618. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we gather at the altar of the Lord once again to be nourished in word and in sacrament, mindful of God's love for each and every one of us. Let us seek God's mercy and forgiveness, preparing ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Catherine of Siena, Virgin and Doctor of the Church. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your Church, grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Tudors appeared, claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with this man and let them go. For if this, endeav if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged. 
ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One, One thing, thing I, I seek, seek to dwell, dwell in the house, house of, the, of Lord. the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing, One I, thing seek I seek to dwell, dwell in the house, house of the of Lord. The Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the lo loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I One seek, thing I to, seek to dwell, dwell in, the, in house the house of the, the Lord. Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days, days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them, filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, chapter 6 of John's Gospel which we have just heard proclaim, brings us the famous bread of life discourse. 
And many of us are familiar with this story and this discourse more in the summer months when it's typically proclaimed. But today, we hear of the beginning of this sixth chapter, and in particular, the miraculous multiplication of the fishes and loaves. And we're familiar with this miracle, if we think about it. From hardly anything, five loaves and two fish, Jesus multiplies the food. He feeds the thousands gathered there with him. And even more, the leftovers can feed more people. We hear and hear and hear this miracle time and time again. And of course, we also understand that this passage foretells of the Eucharist, which Jesus would also take, bless, break, and give. This miracle is a foretelling of the Eucharist that Jesus celebrates with his apostles on the night of the Last Supper. But what caught my attention in particular today is that from hardly anything does this miracle take place. Yes, we're well aware that Jesus multiplies and feeds the thousands, But what caught my attention was that he does this from hardly anything. A meager offering of five loaves and two fish. With what little Jesus had, he manages to feed thousands. A miracle. As I think of this, I think of our lives in our lives in the sense of making our lives an offering to God. How many times do we think of our life as an offering to God? In particular, making our lives as an offering on this very altar that we come to celebrate each and every day. The great miracle, of course, when we come to this Mass is that we are fed with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. But before that, as the priest invites people, we too are invited to place our lives on this altar. We give to God all that we have and all that we are with our joys, our happiness, our sorrows, and our pains, our life is an offering to God. Brothers and sisters, we don't have to be perfect also to make that offering. We come as we are, who we are, and we give ourselves completely to God. And God does what God will do for us. We come here today to offer ourselves each and every day to our loving God. And so, brothers and sisters, we offer ourselves, our prayers, and our needs to our Heavenly Father this day. For the Holy Father and all who lead the Church, may God bless them with strength as they care for His flock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in authority, may God infuse them with integrity and the wisdom needed to guide those they serve. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hunger physically, spiritually, or mentally, may God give them the nourishment they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For those in, the, in this faith community, we have committed themselves, who have committed themselves to careers in service to others. May the Lord bless them and keep them safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed from this world and moved on to eternal life, may God welcome them into his heavenly embrace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the repose of the soul of Gabriella Gaba, for whom this mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we present to you and bring to you and offer to you this day with faith and trust that you will provide for all our needs. Grant to us what we ask of you in faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we invite you to come forward to place a donation in the baskets near the altar to help in the mission of the cathedral. We continue to thank you for your generosity. Pray, my brothers, my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Catherine of Siena, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 1028. Join in singing... You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, number 1028. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift the finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know his voice so when you call your family Lord we follow and rejoice you satisfy the hungry heart with the gift of finest wheat come give to us O oh, saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing it to you, our praise and gratitude, that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. satisfy the hungry heart with the gift of finest sweet. Come, give to us, O oh, saving Lord, the bread of life to eat.
Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine. Through Christ our Lord. We would like to welcome any first-time visitors who are here with us today. If it's your first time, kindly raise your hand so that we may offer you a kind welcome. <laughs> welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels, and thank you for being with us here today as we are nourished in word and in sacrament and lay our lives as an offering to our loving God. When we do that, wait for the miraculous things that will happen in our life. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. And as always, we do have a volunteer or staff member in the South Ambulatory for a validation for 90 minutes if you parked here in the Cathedral parking garage. Thank you and have a blessed day, everyone.